Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to welcome you, those that have logged in online. We are so grateful that you chose to worship with us. But I'm going to tell you, this has already been a time of worship and power. The word of God has been prayed, decreed, and declared in this house. And right now, I don't care what happened. I don't care what was said. But right now, you got to make God bigger than whatever it was. Because we're going to another level today. Amen. There's an anointing. There's a decree. And there is a breakthrough of deliverance and healing right here, right now. We can't afford to leave anything behind. We can't afford to stay in our place of pity party and suffering. We have to move into our authority, our responsibility of victory. know there's something that has to break in here today I don't know about you but there's some things in my life I cannot afford to go another 10 minutes without it breaking you know in the NBA when they get to the finals and sometimes you find a team they, they got their backs against the wall all the stats are against them and when they go out there, they can't afford to be in their feelings about the last three, four, five games that they may have lost. In that moment, they got to reach back. They got to pull up every dream, everything that they know that has been placed into them, everything that they've been coached to do. And they've got to press in in order to stay alive in the tournament, right? Some of us are in those finals. bringing us this far we thank you for breakthrough we thank you oh God for an anointing and a power to move us forward father we have not melted up we're not backing down but we're standing in your power we're standing on your word and we give you the glory come on and open up your mouth and bless him hey, he wants to hear from you today Jesus we thank you oh God thank you oh God Thank you, oh God. Fill the room. Fill the temple, oh God, with your glory. Fill the temple with your power. Hey! He ain't gave up on you. Don't give up on him. If you're still breathing, that means that there's more for you to do. And he's here and he's pressing and he's waiting to hear from you. Come on, we're going to decree this from our spirit man because we need to remember. Hey! You are my strength, strength like no other. Yes, come on, saints. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. Tell them, you are my strength. You are my strength. Yes. Strength like no other. You're my 
my peace. that you're lifting us up, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you are our God. You are my God. I can make this thing personal. I made a decision that you are not only Lord, but you are Savior. You are all that I need. Father, you are my Alpha. You are my Omega. You are greater, oh God. Hey, hey, Come on, come on, 
on, come on, come on, come on. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Tell him who he is to you. Tell him who he is to be. Tell him what you want, oh God. We came to decree and declare the beauty of the Lord, the greatness of God. We're speaking life to our situations. We're speaking life, oh God, over our families. We're speaking life over our marriages. We're speaking life over our homes. We're speaking life over this ministry. We're speaking life over our community. We are speaking life. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You're my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're my God. Come on church, say hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. you got it let's do it again say hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands lift your hearts hallelujah 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 you're my God yes hallelujah hallelujah
and say hallelujah hallelujah yes we offer you the highest praise hallelujah hallelujah you're my god Hallelujah, 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 you're my God. Oh, you're on a hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, Hosanna. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Come on, press in, saints. Hey, Talk to your king. Hey, come on and press in, press in, press in. Come out of the mountain gates. He wants us in the inner courts this morning. Come on and press in, declare and decree. Hey, who he is in your life? Hallelujah. Hey. undying love he loves us with an unfailing love regardless of where we've been or regardless of what we've done we are already forgiven he forgives us because of the blood of Christ he is jealous for me loves like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. 
when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are towards me and oh how he loves us oh oh how he loves us how he loves us oh come on church say oh and oh how he loves us oh oh how he loves us yes how he loves us oh come on we're gonna build that up real big in our spirit say oh and oh And he is our pride Bought with redemption By the grace in his eyes If grace is an ocean We're all sinking How many want to sink in his grace? And earth meets heaven Like a sloppy wet kiss And my heart beats rapidly Inside of my chest I don't have time to rehearse these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. your grace we thank you for your power we thank you for oh God keeping us we thank you for loving us unconditionally you know when I'm going through the enemy will tell me it's because he don't love me but that's the devil is a lie he loves us 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 oh your eyes just for a moment and just think about if God didn't love you you wouldn't be here today I'm not talking about in this house of God but I'm talking about on this earth he loved you enough to give you another breath he loved you enough to give you another day because he loves you hallelujah you are here right now in the name of Jesus. When we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, 
He's done it out of abundance of his love. Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for everything that you do is out of a love relationship that you have with us. And we thank you for that love, that unconditional love, that agape love that you share each and every day with each and every one of us. Lord, we ask even now that you never stop loving us, never stop pouring into us your power and your love, never stop giving us the things that we need, Lord God, to, to be successful as believers, as Christians in this earth realm. We thank you today, oh God, for loving us. God, you've given us <laughs> the opportunity to love you back. We pray that the people of God not only would receive your love, but they would love you back, Lord. They would love you in their words. They would love you in their deeds. They would love you in their conversations. They would love you in their actions, Lord. They would love you with their whole hearts, all that is within them. Lord, let us love you even as you love us unconditionally, Lord. Let us show our love towards you. Let us let our love for you spill over to other people, oh God. That everyone that knows you, Lord God, and everyone that is in love with you would share your love with somebody else that does not know you, Lord Jesus. That we all can come into the fellowship and the family of believers in the body of Christ. That we all can see the glory of your, your anointing and your power. We all can enter into your presence, oh God. We thank you today, Lord. For everyone that is here and everyone that is tuning in online and everyone that desired to be here, but for whatever reason, they could not be here today. Lord, we love you and we love them also. Heavenly Father, we pray that your word would go forth. Lord, let it go forth with the love and the anointing of God. <laughs> let it be delivered in love. Let your anointing flow. Lord, let everyone that's a hearer of your word love you enough to be obedient to do your word, Lord God. Because you said, Jesus, if we love you, we'll keep your commandments. Lord, let us keep the word of God near and dear to our heart today. As the people are hungry for direction, give them direction. As the people are hungry for insight, give them insight. As the people are hungry, God, for a fresh move from you, Lord, let it manifest in their lives today. Whatever the needs are, oh, how you love us. And oh, how you care for us, oh God. We thank you right now. We release favor right now. We release your anointing right now. We release your power right now in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, everybody say, oh, how he loves me. Come on, say it like you mean it. Does God love you? Amen. You ought to say, oh, how he loves me. Yeah, you make it personal. Amen. Oh, how the Lord loves me. Amen. We thank the Lord and we welcome you to Love Fellowship Church. You may take your seats. We give God all the glory and honor and praise today for his amazing amen power of love his amazing anointing amen his amazing word how many know god is amazing hallelujah he is amazing in all that he does and all that he says he is truly amazing and we've been through amen so much in the first part of this year we were we were out last week due to the weather and then we had weather again amen but we are here today gathered in the house of the Lord because we love the Lord, amen, and because God first loved us. And we want to continue in our teaching. As we started out this year, we always seek God for direction and a, a good start, and we always ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want us to uh, have as a theme for the year? And and, and God has been faithful over the years, amen, and he certainly has been faithful this year in the title being repositioning, amen, being the overall theme. But today, I want to 
point our, our, our attention to a couple of things that I believe will help each and every one of us. Amen. As we allow the Lord to reposition us for greater in 2022, I will submit to you that you must have a relentless focus. Amen. I said a relentless focus. Everybody say, I must have a relentless focus. <laughs> So today we want to talk about, amen, the focus, amen, what it means to have a relentless focus, my God. As we were worshiping God and as we were praising God, uh, the spirit of the Lord was, was so strong in the, in the atmosphere, amen. The Lord says that that's a part of the relentless focus, amen. The fact that you can say hallelujah to your God, amen, that word hallelujah focuses on the one that is all powerful in your life, amen. The one that who is, who is almighty in your life. And I truly believe God is all powerful in our lives. How I many you believe that today? So we're talking about, amen, having this relentless focus in order to be repositioned for greater in 2022. So I want you to write some notes, amen. Take some notes on your phone, your iPad, or your pen and paper, however you do it. I truly believe this is a word from the Lord, amen. Number one, the first point I want to make is that uh, uh, we, in order to have a relentless focus, we can't focus. Focus on what happens to us. In order to have a relentless focus, you cannot focus on what happens to you. I want to submit to you, you must focus on what happens through you. Amen. Ah, somebody missed that. Amen. Focus on what happens through you and not what happens to you. Amen. See, a relentless focus requires that. That word relentless means constant. That word relentless means unwavering, amen? That word relentless means no matter what's coming our way, we cannot stop and we will not lose our focus. It is something that is ingrained in us. And the Lord said to me in 2022, if we're going to experience the greater through the repositioning, we must have a relentless focus, not on the things that happen to us, but the things that God wants to do and make sure happens through us. Amen. How many of you know that you can't focus on what happens to you, but what happens through you? Amen. We're going to break that down. Let's look at it in Isaiah chapter number 59 Isaiah chapter number 59 in the amplified classic version tell yourself I must have a relentless focus a relentless focus in order to be repositioned for greater in 2022 Isaiah 59 and in verse number 19 in the amplified classic version it says this so as the result of the Messiah's intervention they shall reverently fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, <laughs> the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So here it is, the prophet Isaiah is, is, is really encouraging and really painting a powerful picture to the nation or the children of Israel. And he's, this is a very familiar passage of scripture, but I want to come at it from the perspective of the relentless focus. Amen. He says, notice, he says again in verse number 19, so as a result of Messiah's intervention, the Messiah being Jesus, amen, how many of you know that Jesus can intervene on your behalf? I believed in 2022, no matter what you face, Jesus can intervene on your behalf. Amen. As a result of Jesus, the Messiah's intervention, they shall reverently fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood. See, that's what happens to the children of Israel. Amen. The enemy comes in like a flood. The enemy comes in roughshod over them. That's exactly, amen, what happens. 
happens to them. Isaiah the prophet was saying, listen, I'm not denying that stuff will happen to you. He used the word, the scripture in the Amplified Classic Version uses the word when. Hallelujah. Not if the enemy will come in like a flood, but when. Everybody say when. See, what happens to you will come in 2022. I'm not painting a picture that stuff won't happen to you, amen? But there's something greater than what happens to you. It's what happens through you, my God. If Isaiah would have left it there, then we would all be in a world of hurt. But he doesn't keep it there, amen? See, sickness happens to us, but healing happens through us, amen? Job loss happens to us, my God, but Jehovah Jireh, our provider, he works in and through us. How many of you believe that today? Amen. See, you may have challenges in relationships, but that's what happens to you, but the love of God is what works in and through you, my God. You may have challenges in your mind mentally. You may have attacks of the enemy against your peace. Amen. You may have attacks of the enemy against your mind, but I want to submit to you. That is what happens to you, but the love and the peace of God can work in and through you to bring you out. Amen. How many of you believe that today? And so he says in Isaiah 59 and 19, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, everybody say the spirit of God. See, that's what happens through us. God's spirit, amen, doesn't happen to us. God's spirit works in and through us, amen. We cannot lose sight the Lord said so many people in the body of Christ, because, and I get it because of everything that has happened in the world, we have, we have lost our relentless focus on what's supposed to be happening through us. And we've taken our eyes off of what's supposed to be happening through us, and we started to focus more on what's happening to us. Don't miss this. And what happens over time is as if we continue to focus on what happens to us, then we become reactionary. We're constantly react, reacting and trying to put out this fire and that fire. And that's why many of us feel so mentally exhausted. Oh, can I speak on that for a moment? Many of us feel mentally drained because we've been focused on the wrong thing. Because, amen, for your mind to be triggered to the point of depression or your mind to be triggered to the point of quitting and giving up or your mind to be triggered to the point of exhaustion, your mind has had to take in a lot of the wrong things. You cannot stop everything that's going to happen in this world. Let me just put that out there. You can't stop everything that's going to happen in this world. You can't stop every negative thing that might happen in this world. You can't stop every challenge that you may face in 2022. This is not a message that tells you you can stop everything that's happening, but you can change your mindset. You can allow God to reposition you in your focus, amen? And if we start focusing on what's going on on the inside of us, then it'll help us deal with what's happening on the outside of us. You didn't hear what I said, amen? If we'll start focusing what's going on on the inside of us, what's on the inside of us is greater than what's happening on the outside of us. The Bible tells us this, greater is he that is what? On the outside of us. Greater is he that is on the outside of us. That's not what it says, is it? It says what? Greater is he that is what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is what? So the prophet Isaiah is simply saying what the apostle Paul said, or Paul is saying what the prophet said. He says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God, we know dwells on the inside of every born again believer. 
the spirit of the Lord will what? Lift up a standard against him. The reason why standards have not been raised is because we've been focused on the wrong things. And we've come to a point where we hear a lot of Christians just so tired because they've been focused on the wrong things. But the spirit of God comes to give you new life. Amen. How many of you need some new life in 2022? The spirit of God comes to rejuvenate you. The spirit of God comes to remotivate you. The spirit of God comes to reactivate your faith. The spirit of God comes to reinvigorate and revive you. The spirit of God comes to bring revival in your life so that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you don't have to be trained like a battery that cannot, amen, crank. You don't have to be trained, my God, like all the life has sucked out of you because you're not focused on what's happening to you. You're focused on what's happening through you. Come on, say, I got a relentless focus. And some of us have to be honest and say, I'm getting a relentless focus. See, you may not have it yet, amen? But you need to get it, my God. Come on, tell yourself, I need to get a relentless focus. And the relentless focus, I'm going to say it till you get it, amen, is not on what happens to you. So when you start reacting and feeling a certain kind of way because stuff is happening to you, that's when you got to reposition yourself. So if this side represents what's happening to me, amen, if I stay stuck on this side of my life, then guess what? I will never allow God to reposition me to this side of my life because this side of my life is what's happening through me. See, the Holy Ghost, how many of you believe the Holy Spirit is not moved by what's happening to you? The Holy Spirit cannot be stopped by what's happening to you. How many of you believe that today? So if the Holy Ghost is not stopped by what's happening to you, then why are you stuck in what's happening to you? Yeah, yeah. To stuck means to be to be stuck means you're rehearsing it till it starts playing out over and over in your life. And you'll and you'll just continually get lower and weaker and tired and broken and busted and disgusted. And you'll just be stuck over here. And your confession will always be what's happening to you. Wow. That's a good indicator to know that you're stuck. And you need to be repositioned. If when, amen, if your conversation always is centered around what's happening to you, I want to submit to you, you're stuck. And if you're going to be repositioned for greater, that means you got to allow God to move you out of and unstick you. Amen. You got to get out of that place of being stuck in what's happening to you. Come on, tell yourself, I got to get unstuck. Amen. We all have to get unstuck. There have been things, there have been things that we all have dealt with. But we've got to do as, as the Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind us. Amen. We've got to be at a place where we let the things that are behind us go. And I'm speaking, amen, for a moment to those that have been suffering in their minds. Because it is a real, a real situation. Amen. It's a real, a real deal. There are so many things that in our natural mind we've not had to comprehend there's so many things in our natural mind that we've not had to comprehend and over the last two years many of us have taken in stuff over and over again and it's almost like it's an assault to our minds and we think that okay amen how much more can I take Am I speaking to somebody today? But I want to submit to you that as long as you're stuck, you won't be able to take much more. As long as you refuse to allow God to reposition you in 2022, you will not be able to take much more. 
And many will go over the edge. I'm not talking about you, but just in the world, amen. Suicide rates are going up. People are going over the edge because they can't take anymore. This is a real thing. And we must, the Lord said, we must address this. There is no way when you have a relentless focus on what's happening through you, meaning the power of God and the Holy Ghost and everything else that comes with the kingdom of God, when you are focused on that, there's no way the enemy can take your mind. I said there's no way. It all, the enemy only can come in, amen, the Bible says when an enemy comes in, he can only come in if you let him in. He has no key to your mind. You must unlock the door and open up the door of your mind to him. No, I'm not getting a whole lot of amens. I say he has no key to your mind. And you say, well, why is that important? Because, amen, if your mind is hijacked, he can take over the whole house. If he can get in through the front door, he'll take over every door in your life. It's time that we start doing some sweeping around some of our doors, amen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We need to do some sweeping around some of our doors, amen. Because the enemy, amen, has been let in. It has been, Satan has had a relentless focus on our emotional state of being over the last two years. You may think, well, he's had a relentless focus on, on the bodies, our bodies. Look at the number of deaths. Look at the number of sicknesses. Your body doesn't control you. It's your mind that controls you. Oh, I'm speaking truth today. I said, it, your body is a consequence of, of, of everything. That's like the third thing, amen. The first thing is he wants to control your mind. Because if he can control your thinking, he can control your actions. He can control how you live. So he's always after the mindset, amen. This is why, this is why, you see, how many of you have noticed how much uh, young people have been going out killing other people, amen. It seems like it's just off the charts right now. But the, but the Lord showed me, he said, amen. He says that if you think about it, if a, if a young person sits at home during the pandemic, amen, and, and all they're doing is, is, is they're not on virtual, they cut school, they're not on virtual, and they're, and they're getting involved with all the negativity of social media, and then on top of that, they're involved with the with the, the the game boards, amen, whatever you call them, my God, the, the computer games and so forth. They become desensitized to life. Because if, the, if they spend hours, amen, in this virtual world of hatred, in this virtual world of I can kill somebody on the television or on my monitor, amen, then guess what? Killing somebody in real life is just a, it's just an easy a next step, amen. It's just a consequence of all the stuff that's been in, uh, assaulting and attacking their mind. So by the time their body put, gets the gun in the hand and they pull the trigger, the mind has already been hijacked. But see, that's the same thing with us, amen. You may not have a gun, you may not have a Uzi, you may not have a nine, you may not have a Glock, you may not have any of that, but my God, you got depression going on. You got worry going on. You got fear going on. You got unresolved issues in relationships going on. You got anger going on. You got frustration going on. You got loneliness going on. You got hurt going on. You got all of this other stuff going on in you. And you allow that stuff to happen to you. And you are not focused on what's supposed to be happening through you. And being strong doesn't mean you look like you all right. 
Being strong doesn't mean you fake it until you make it. Being strong means you have a relentless focus. Being strong, this is the side that represents being stuck. Being strong means I'm going to get unstuck and I'm going to allow God to reposition me for greater in 2022. Being strong means you be honest with yourself and say, what am I really dealing with? In other words, what's really going on with me? Because if you cannot be honest with what's really going on with you, how can you get help for what's going on with you? There was a lot going on in Isaiah 59. There was a lot going on in the nation of Israel. Amen. There was a lot going on among the people of God. But Isaiah, in all that he's talking about, and you can read from verse 1 on down, and you'll see that there's a lot of ground script, scripturally and spiritually that the prophet covers, amen? We're not going to cover all that ground tonight God, or today. God wants us to cover this ground because this ground has been messing with us. And we might as well deal with what's been really messing with us, Amen. So this mental ground has been messing with us. This mental frustration has been messing with us. Anger and pain and loneliness and fear, all of these things have been messing with you. But it's time to reposition. Come on and say, I've got to reposition. I've got to reposition, amen. I've got to refocus. I've got to have a relentless focus on the power of God that can heal whatever hurt and pain and whatever mental anguish and suffering, whatever emotional challenges that I face. This is why so many believers simply settle for any old thing. If we had to count how many believers have given up on promises, visions, and dreams as a result of this pandemic, it would be too many to count. Because people have focused on what's happened to them. And they concluded because of what's happened to me, God evidently is not going to do anything else through me. Oh, it's real quiet, amen. But I heard somebody say the devil is a liar, hallelujah. And Jesus is my Messiah, hallelujah. He's still, amen, ready to work through you. He's still ready to move in you. He's still ready for you to open up the door and let him in more in 2022. He still wants to reposition you for greater. Say, so right, I got to identify. I got to allow the spirit of the Lord to help me pinpoint and identify all the doors that I opened up for the devil. All the doors that I opened up for, the, uh, for Satan. That means you got to be intentional about that. That's what a relentless focus is all about. Take out a piece of paper. Get on your iPhone. Get on your iPad. Write it down. God, show me how the enemy is coming like a flood. Show me how the enemy is coming to my life like a flood. Show me those areas that I have allowed the enemy to come in, those doors that I've opened and unlocked for the enemy, and he's just sitting there running roughshod over my mind. Show me, Lord. If you're not willing to ask God to show you, you don't have a relentless focus. But if you allow God to simply show you, amen, then he can work in and through you. How many of you believe in what I'm saying? Amen. You got to let God show you first. So ask God to show you. Ask God to show you. And then when he shows you, then this is what you do. You, 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 you put it on the altar. You don't have to come to Love Fellowship Church to put it on the altar, but you can. But, but you put it on the altar. In other words, this, this is, this, these are non-negotiable areas of your life. If, if, if loneliness or anxiety has been one of those doors, I'm just using an example. 
And God says, this is what this is. This is what's been shutting you down. And this is what's been keeping you from me moving and doing greater in your life. If, the, if whatever it is, then it becomes a non-negotiable. In other words, when the devil does this. Now, he's not going to knock. He's going to throw something at you. Amen. To trigger that negativity. You think he's going to knock at your front door. He's not going to knock at your front door. No, no, no. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he's going to come in with some stuff that he knows that would trigger you to get stuck again. <laughs> oh, this has come to help you today. It's come to help me. So when he starts knocking or he starts coming at you with those triggers, you, because you've already done the work, amen, of identifying and allowing God to show you what's happening to you, those triggers of what happens to you, then you say, devil, this is a non-negotiable in 2022. I'm not going to be stuck over here because God has repositioned me over here. I'm going to a better place. How many of you want to go to a better place in God? I'm going to a better place in 2022. Some of you have been saying, well, I'll lose some friends. I'll lose some relationships. I'll lose this and I'll lose that. But my God, I'd rather lose people that are toxic than lose my mind that God gave me. Because the truth of the matter is, you can still love them even though you lose them. Ah, you didn't hear what I said. Oh boy, they want me to shut up now. I said you can still love them even though you lose them. Doesn't mean your love walk changes. It just means you can't be stuck any longer. In toxicity. Parents, we got to teach our children this. If we let our children sit there and constantly get assaulted in their minds by the enemy and we don't counteract that, if we don't allow the spirit of God to pinpoint those things, then guess what? It'll just become a snowball effect. It'll get bigger and bigger and bigger until you get so overwhelmed, parents, you just want to give up on your children. But our children have to be repositioned as well. Even in their minds, parents, don't stop getting into the, trying to enter into the understanding of your children's thought life. I know it's frustrating because it seems like they let the world in, but they won't let you in. But don't stop, amen. Don't stop praying. Don't stop loving. And don't stop asking your children and let you in be honest with your children let them know i want to be let in so that i can have a more personal relationship with you just this weekend there was a 26 year old when a, a famous producer director actress her son died committed suicide and and you probably read the news you probably know who I'm talking about but she had all of this acclaim and money and fortune and fame but evidently that wasn't enough to stop her child from taking their life parents if you if you get stuck and, and this is even for adult children as well. If you get stuck, then trust to know the enemy's not just after you. He's after your children. And he's going to try to come double at them. So whatever you let slide, parents, the enemy will try to pounce and double that on your children. Please, parents, please, if you have been slack, 
and I'm talking to myself as well, if you have been slack in how you have been raising your children, and I get it, stuff has happened to us, it's time to jerk the slack out of ourselves. If we have allowed the life stuff that's happened to us to get us stuck, it's time to reposition ourselves to get unstuck. Your children are counting on you. And if you don't have children, guess what? God is counting on you. No matter how it goes, it's not, it is not acceptable to God that we continue on in a, in a lifestyle of being stuck. Because when you're stuck, you're not going in the right direction. You're not growing, and you're not going, and you're not living the way God wants you to live. Amen? Is this helpful to you today? So that's point number one. Focus, focus. Everybody say focus. Focus on what happens through you and not what happens to you. Point number two today. Amen. It comes straight out of Isaiah 59. Focus on raising the standard. Focus on raising the standard. Amen. Notice again in Isaiah 59 and 19, he says, when the enemy, the prophet says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall what? Raise up or lift up a standard against him. <laughs> he shall raise up or lift up a standard against him and put him to what? Flight. For he will come like a rushing stream which the breath of the Lord dries. In other words, when the standard is raised, the enemy is put to flight. Amen. In other words, the devil is put on the run. How many of you want the devil to be put on the run in your, in your marriages, in your households, in your family relationships, in your businesses, in your jobs, in your communities? How many of you want the devil to be put on the run in your life? He says when the standard is raised, the devil is put to flight. So if we're going to reposition ourselves for greater in 2022, we must raise our standard of living. It's personal. Everybody say it's personal. See, you must raise your standard of living. If your standard of living is beneath what God's word says it should be, then it needs to be raised. The benefit of raising your standard of living, it puts the devil to flight. It puts him on the run. If we don't, amen, take the time. And I'm not talking about raising the standard of living from the, from the perspective of, 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 of finances or getting a new car or getting a new house. All of those things are byproducts of raising your standard of living. But when the devil is coming in, amen, and he's coming in roughshod, getting a new car and a new house doesn't matter, amen. Amen. If your household is already turned upside down, what can a new house do for you? What can a new car do for you? What we need to do in 2022 is see the devil put on the run. To wherever our feet tread, there's no opposition that we have not overcome through the power of God. That whatever doors God opens up for us because our standard of living has been raised. My God, the devil cannot close a door that he didn't open. Hallelujah. I said Satan cannot close a door that he didn't open. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard against him and put him on the run.
I decree and declare over your life today, God wants to put the devil on the run. Hallelujah. See, you don't know his playbook, but God knows his playbook. You don't know the next move he's making against you, but God knows the next move that he's making against you. Put the standard, raise the standard, and God will put him on the run. So the standard, everybody say the standard. The standard, and we're going to be, the Lord told me, he said, I, I want you to go into in-depth teaching and understanding about the standard as we go forward over the next couple of months. Amen. But, 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 but we must raise our standard of love. Hallelujah. We must raise our standard of faith. We must raise our standard of obedience. If we want to raise our standard of living, we must raise our standard of love. We must raise our standard of faith. We must raise our standard of obedience. This is how the devil is put on the run. So that, amen, even when he's plotting and planning against you, even when he's trying to stop you, he will have no ground to stand on. If this, if this side of the podium represents being stuck and this side represents the repositioning of you, you want the devil stuck over here and you moving over here, amen? You're flowing over here. In other words, every time the devil is trying to do something, he can't touch you because you're constantly moving and flowing in the spirit of God. How many of you want to constantly move and flow in the spirit of God so that whatever he's trying to plot and plan, it will not work because you're not in the place that it can work. Don't allow the enemy to get you stuck in the place where his plots and plans can work in 2022. And we've all been there. Lord knows I have been there. But I had to allow God to reposition me. In the latter part of 2020, uh, 2021, I had to allow God to reposition me. I had to, I had to, I had to allow God to show me how I was being stuck in certain areas because of what was happening to me, and that became my focus. What was happening to me? And God said, now I need you to teach my people, even as I'm teaching you, how to not be focused on what's happening to you, but what's happening through you. And that means I've got to raise my standard of living. The next point I would say is this. We must have a vertical focus. So if we're going to raise our standard of living, it requires a greater vertical focus. Amen. I'm going to go two places with this. And first place is Joshua chapter one. And, and, and you'll find that, amen, Joshua will be a part of our teaching. Amen. There's some things in Joshua that God wants us to be reminded of us and some of us we need to hear it over and over again all of us we need to in Joshua chapter number one in verse number five the Bible says this no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses so I will be with you and I want you to underline and highlight. I'm reading out an Amplified Classic. Underline and highlight that last verse, part of that verse. I will not, what? Fail you or forsake you. Wow. See, if you're going to raise your standard of living, you got to know that God will not fail you. Neither will he forsake you. Because if you don't believe that, that's just like opening up the door to the enemy. That has to be the foundation of your belief system in 2022. 
that God will not fail me. There was a point <laughs> last year when it just seemed like everything was happening to me. You all know about the deaths of my parents. Uh, three parents died in last year. But even with the kingdom project to build God a house, it just seemed like it just seemed like impossibility was lurking all around. And there was a moment. There was a moment. There was a time. There was a season where. Even though I was preaching and teaching the word, can I be real about it? In the back of my mind, I was wondering, God, is this promise going to come to pass? Is this thing really going to happen? It just seems like it's just so much happening to me right now. And some of us, we are, we are, we are afraid to have those type of conversations with God. That's a, that's a trick of the enemy. When you are afraid to really open up with God and let God in. Let God into that dark place. Let God into that hurtful place. Let God into that place of rejection and pain. Let God into that place where you feel like God has let you down. And I had to let God in. And when I let God in, he let his light shine bright in me. And I regained my focus. There, 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 the Lord told me, he said, son, there are many preachers that are preaching week after week, many pastors and, they, and suicidal thoughts are all in their heads. They're looking for a way out of the assignment. Because of all the stuff that's happening to them. See, the stuff that's happening to you is real. But the stuff that's happening through you that God wants you to do is even greater than that. God was telling Joshua, Joshua, Moses is dead. That happened to you. <laughs> Your leader is dead. That happened to you. But I'm about to show you what's going to happen through you. Hallelujah. Now, now, losing Moses was like losing his parent, like losing his mom, like losing his dad. Joshua depended on Moses for guidance and direction, support emotionally and naturally. Joshua looked up to Moses. That was not a light thing for Moses to die in Joshua's life. And God had to come in and not only acknowledge the death of Moses, but help Joshua understand that he had to raise his standard of living. He had to come in and let Joshua know, Joshua, you must have a vertical focus. He says this in verse number five of Joshua one, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, Joshua. As I was with Moses, your spiritual father, so will I be with you. I will not what? Fail you. Come on, everybody else say, God, I thank you that you will not fail me. Hallelujah. He said, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. God, I thank you. Yet ought to be your confession. Because see, when I was down and low and I felt stuck, I had to regain my focus. I had to realize even though stuff was happening to me, my God would not fail me. Even though stuff was happening to me, my God would not forsake me. I believe by faith that he'll do the same thing for you. You ought to say that like your life depends on that. Even though stuff is happening to me, my God would not fail my family. Even though stuff is happening to my children, my God would not fail my children. Oh God, help your people to get a hold of this. He says, so I will not fail you or forsake you. 
Now, verse 6 speaks of the vertical. Here's the vertical. He says, be strong and confident and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the Lord, which I swore to their fathers to give them. In other words, the vertical is the vertical is like this up and down line. When when God was telling Joshua, listen, be strong in me. He wasn't talking about being strong in his, in his own self. No, Joshua's strength was not enough. He was hurting because of the death of Moses. He didn't have direction because Moses was now gone. But God was saying, Joshua, you got to get a vertical focus now. Moses is gone. Stuff has happened. Things have not worked out. Challenges have come. They have tried to knock you down. But where is your vertical focus? In his vertical focus, he had to learn how to get, gain strength from God. Hallelujah. In his vertical focus, he had to learn how to have courage from God. Amen. And you too must do the same thing. I want to submit to you that God wants to stretch each and every one of you in 2022. It's going to be a good stretching. Amen. Some of you want to stay in your current position. You don't want to be stretched. You don't want to be challenged. You don't want to be asked to do anything more. But God is saying that's being stuck. Wow. Wow. While Joshua was grieving, legitimately grieving and hurting, God said, I'm going to stretch you. When Joshua was an emotional wreck, God said, I'm going to stretch you. You cannot lose, let your emotion be the excuse for not allowing God to stretch you. We've been hiding behind our feelings. And because we feel a certain way, it's okay to be stuck. But God said it's time to get unstuck, amen. It's time to allow God to reposition you. It's no longer that we're hiding behind our feelings. Our feelings are getting healed. Our feelings are getting repaired. Our feelings, amen, are getting stronger in God. The excuse of feelings cannot happen any longer when you allow yourself to have a relentless focus. When you allow yourself to be unstuck. Feelings do not dictate how you live anymore. Isn't it interesting? You would think that God would give Joshua a, a two months to mourn. <laughs> But he didn't give him too much to mourn because he knew if he would have let Joshua be by himself for two months, the devil would run roughshod over him. Some of us, we think isolation is the thing. Being alone is the thing. No, the thing is having a vertical focus on your Savior, Jesus Christ. The thing is allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you, the power and anointing of God to move you out of your place of being stuck. That's the thing. That's the thing. He says, be strong and of good courage, for you shall cause his people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. For only, for only you be strong, Joshua, verse 7 says, and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, what? Commanded you. We said in raising our standard of living, we must, amen, be obedient. He's talking about the obedience factor right here. He says, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. If you don't see God taking you anywhere, how will you go anywhere in God? That speaks to our vision and our relentless focus. You got to see God taking you somewhere in 2022. Allow the Lord to take you beyond you. Oh, you didn't.
didn't hear what I said. Somebody ought to write that down. Uh, God, take me beyond me. Because you represent limitations. But God represents an unlimited world and realm. A part of your confession ought to be, God, take me beyond me. Because you will always go back to, to your past. You will always go back to your mistakes. You will always go back to the stuff that got you stuck in the first place. But God, take me beyond me so that I don't go back to those things that you have unstuck me from. How many of you want God to take you beyond you? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want God to take me beyond me. Because, amen, last year I felt like I was stuck so many times, but I had to release it. I had to identify. I had to raise my standard. I had to ask God to take me beyond me. You got to do the same thing. He says, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. That means God, take me beyond me. He says in verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That's the vertical focus. That you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way, what? Prosperous. Then you shall deal wisely and have good success. He says in verse 9, have I not commanded you, Joshua? Be strong and vigorous. Be very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God, he says it twice, is with you wherever you go. He wouldn't have said it if Joshua didn't need to hear it. It wouldn't be preached if you didn't need to hear it. It wouldn't be taught if you didn't need to hear it. So I'm speaking to the hearers today. Amen. I'm speaking to the hearers. Do I have any hearers in here today? Do I have any hearers in here today? You know you need to hear this word. Hallelujah. You know you need God to have give you a relentless focus. You need, you know, you need to know that you're not going to be focused on what's happening to you, but what's happening through you. You need to know you got to raise your standard of living. Mm. Let me take you to one more scripture and we'll close out for today. Amen. John 15. We're going to look at one verse for the sake of time. John 15. John 15. In verse number five, John 15, this is Jesus. John chapter 15 in verse number five, and we'll close it out, amen. John 15 in verse number five, an amplified classic version. Amen, it says this, Jesus says this, and, 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 and you can go back and read one through four, amen, but I'll focus on five, amen. It says, I am the what? Vine. The vine is not a man going this way horizontal the vine goes vertical amen this speaks to the vertical focus he says i am the vine you are the what branches wow you are the extensions we are the extensions of the vine and so as god downs low, downloads a word like this to us it's, the, it's downloaded just like the vine receives water and it extends from the vine to the branches you receive the Holy Ghost and you receive the word today, amen. And it is extending from the vine to the branches. You are the branches. This word is extending not only to you outwardly, but extending to you most importantly inwardly. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. To live in God means that you cannot get stuck and stay stuck. I've never seen someone, amen, get stuck in a ditch and never ask for help to get out of the ditch. 
if you hit an ice patch and all of this snow and your car runs off the road into the ditch, you're not going to sit there all night. No, you're going to call somebody, call a tow truck, call a friend, call somebody, amen, call Tyrone, my God. Somebody's going to come and get you out of that ditch. Well, this word has come to get you out of the ditch of life, to get you out of the ditch of depression, to get you out of the ditch of anger and frustration, to get you out of the ditch of low self-esteem and all of the other stuff that has kept you stuck in 2021. Get unstuck. Reposition yourself for greater. He says, I am. Anytime you hear that word, I am, that denotes power. When Moses was scared, God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, I am. When he was fearful of man, God said, you better fear me more than you fear man, Moses. Because I am that I am. Hallelujah. I was there in the beginning and I'm there in the end. I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. I'm the first and the last. He is the great I am. How many believe that today? He is the great I am. So whenever Jesus says I am, he speaks with authority. He speaks with power. He speaks because he knows what he's talking about. He says, I am the vine. And he says, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me, say, I need to live in God. And I am him bears much abundant fruit. However, 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 he says, apart from me. Cut off from vital union with me. That's what we've been talking about all day. Amen, that attack against our minds. Because you can be in church physically, but not be in God spiritually. You hear what I said? You can be in church physically, but not be in God spiritually. He says, apart from me. Wow, wow, wow. He says, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Now, now the Lord said, as I close, he says, this is what that really means. You can do nothing. You can, you can do no good thing that would please God. It's not that you can't do anything. You can do a whole lot of stuff apart from God. But you can't, watch this, you can't do any good thing that would please God apart from him. See, I don't want to be a Christian that's just doing stuff. Hallelujah. I want to do, I want to be a Christian that's doing stuff that pleases God. I want to be a Christian that's doing stuff that matters to God. Jesus said, if you want to do stuff that matters to me, you better get connected to me. You better stay connected to me. You better have a vertical focus on me. You better raise your standard of living. You better start looking at what's happening to you and start focusing on what's happening through you. And teach your children to do the same thing. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up, will raise up a standard against him and put the devil on the run. Can we give God praise today? Hallelujah. Come on, can you shout unto God like you got a word that can help you in 2022? Hallelujah, Jesus. We're all standing on our feet. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your holy name today. We need this word, oh God. 
We need you to reposition us for greater in 2020. We cannot afford to remain stuck in areas of our life. We need you today, God. Our life depends on it. Because apart from you, we can do no good thing that will please you. And if we're not pleasing you, then what are we doing, God? What is our purpose for living if we cannot please you? We need to please you more than we've ever done before. This is a word for the nations, oh God. This is a word for the body of Christ. Whether they're here or whether they're listening online, be a hearer and doer of this word. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Help your people, Lord, today. Many are like Joshua. They've, <laughs> they've been hit with so many things. Many are like the children of Israel. The enemy is coming like a flood. But God, you've given us hope today. You've given us help today in your word. Let us build on this word. Let it not be just a one-time revelation, but let it be a lifetime of relentless focus so that we build and we build and we build to when we look back over our life and over this year, we see real significant change for our good. As you told Joshua, only be strong, only be strong, only be strong and very courageous. For the Lord will not leave you, neither will he forsake you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for never ever leaving your people. I thank you for never forsaking them in the name of Jesus. I thank you that your word has come today to give them new life and new hope in you. They are reinvigorated, oh God. You have challenged them in areas of their minds. You've challenged them to let the light shine in their minds in those dark places. So the negative emotions will not keep them stuck in 2022. Lord, you want to stretch them. You want to stretch them beyond themselves, Lord God, beyond their natural limitations. You want to stretch them to the point where they begin to see and experience your power and your love on a greater dimension. Lord, raise their standard of living. Raise their standard of living, oh God, so that they can be more like you, Jesus. Now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen every heart and every mind in this place. Strengthen every heart and every mind that's listening online in the name of Jesus. With every eye closed, if you're here today and you maybe you're in our online service and you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, we... We want to give you the opportunity to do so today. We truly believe, amen, that <laughs> if you will focus on the vine, Jesus is the vine, hallelujah, then he can do mighty and miraculous things in your life. That relentless focus starts with salvation and relationship with Jesus Christ. The Son of God is Jesus. He died for you. He, he rose on the third day for you. He loves you unconditionally. Will you receive him as your personal Lord and Savior today? If that's you, you say, Pastor Anthony, that's me. I want you to repeat this prayer of salvation after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me 
of all unrighteousness to enter into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for saving me. If you prayed that simple prayer, the Spirit of God has entered into your life, into your heart. You are now saved. You are now born again. You are a child of God. Amen. Go to our website. Click on the contact tab. Let us know that that was you. If you're in live service, amen, we want to acknowledge you as well as receiving Jesus today as Lord and Savior. Perhaps you want to connect with Love Fellowship Church and membership as we start out the year 2022. Amen. We always open up the doors of the house of God to those that, amen, do not have a church home, a body of believers that they could call family. My God, we want to invite you to be a part of this family of God here at Love Fellowship Church. Amen. So if that's your desire, my God, if you're at home, you can go to the contact tab. Let us know. Send us your information. Say, I want to connect. If you are here in live service, amen, we want you to come forward after the end of the service and let us know, yes, that's me. I want to connect. Hallelujah. However you do it, we want you to connect on this level. Amen. God is doing great and mighty things. And we want you to be a part of the move of God in 2022. Amen. So at this time, you may take your seats if you desire to give today. And we pray that's every one of us. Amen. God desires for you to give. He wants you to become a cheerful giver. Amen. A sold out, happy and hilarious giver unto him. And we are truly thankful for the opportunity for you to give today. Your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love. Amen. To support the work the kingdom work of this local body and as you're preparing those offerings today there are several ways to give online even as you're in live service you can give here right now amen go to our website all the information is on the screen and how you can give online i'll give a couple of quick updates on today number one uh there were two inspections that were still outstanding on the kingdom project to build God a house for his glory, for his honor, and for the saving of lost souls. The first inspection was the wheelchair lift inspection. And, and we, over the last several weeks, we have failed that inspection twice. We failed it back in December, and then we failed it uh, the first part of January. We failed it twice. What that meant was that we could not go any further with the project until the wheelchair lift passed its state inspection. Well, we've been asking you to pray. Amen. We've been asking you to join in and believe God with us. And I have great news today. Amen. We passed it on last week. Amen. We passed the wheelchair inspection last week. And so what that means now is that we have the green light to the last inspection. Everybody say the last inspection. The last inspection is called the final inspection. Amen. And so the paperwork is being processed and prepared for that final inspection to take place. Once that spec, uh, the paperwork is submitted and all of the scheduling is done, the, the Mecklenburg County, the state, whoever else, they will come out and do a final walkthrough. Now, we passed, if there was 50 inspections that we had, and I'm just throwing that number out, we passed 49 of them. This is number 50 right here, amen? So there, we passed everything over the last, gosh, it seems like forever, but it hadn't been forever. But every everything they've asked us to do, everything the state, the city, Duke Power, whoever has asked us to do, as of today, it has, it has been done. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Hallelujah. It has been done. And so we need you to, let's, let's, we're on that three-yard line right now. Amen. We, we, we're deep into the red zone. We need you all, amen, as we continue to fast and pray. We need you all to pray that it that this final inspection will be scheduled and we will pass before January the 31st. Amen. That's our stretch goal. That's what we believe in God for. You 
say, Pastor Anthony, that's just a couple of, that's less than a week or just a week. We're believing God. Amen. As I said, there was a point last year when I was reacting to stuff that was happening to me instead of trusting in what was happening through me. Amen. And I had to regain my focus. And this was a part of what was happening to me. And God had to tell me, he said, why are you acting as this, as if this is your project? He said, this is not yours. He said, this is mine. Watch this. Even your life, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Jesus. How many of you believe that today? So even when you look at your life, why act like your life belongs to you? Act rather like your life belongs to God. Your life is not your own. To God you belong. Hallelujah. Have a relentless focus. When I got that revelation from God, it freed me up. It freed me up. And I was ready to preach. I was ready to pastor. I was ready to serve. I was ready to do everything that God wanted me to do. Because for a season, I went on autopilot last year. And that's not a healthy place to be. But I am healthy today, man. I have a healthy mind. I have a healthy spirit. I have a healthy attitude. And God wants you to have the same thing. Well, let's stand on our feet as we look to the Lord. Amen. As we give our benediction and our prayer over our offering on today. Father, in the name of Jesus.